Hello again. I just thought I would uh, take a small little break from the inventory and I thought I'd look at something more like a raise uh, with a bit of other stuff. I thought maybe it would uh, be kind of fun to do a little mini tutorial. So this guy here is a rock exploding or it looks like it's exploding anyways and it's the same rock the same chunks everything's the same just repeating itself over and over so I thought I would do a small tutorial on how um, how to how to make something like that it, it's mainly for the use of arrays and and how to use some arrays and multiple arrays in, in conjunction with each other so without further ado let's let's build a couple of rays so the first thing I think I'll do is just destroy that we don't need it and we don't need that one I don't even know why it's there so uh, for those who don't know what an array is an array is just a collection so when you when you want to do things to an entire collection at the same time you, you can you can build logic so it's like hey we're gonna rotate everything in this collection um, kind of idea and <coughs> as you see what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna get a rock to explode and we need the array to gather all the children and reset their positions so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to build an empty game object and nothing special and I'm going to grab a rock again kind of like the one I just had um, from somewhere something kind of roundish I'll, I'll even use the same rock all right so here I have a rock there's absolutely nothing special to this rock and I'm not going to use any kind of fracturing or destruction system or anything like that. Um, from what you've seen earlier, it was literally just the same rock, but scaled down. Right? It uh, literally was... Uh, all I did is I went like that. And where is that rock? Well, it's going to add a... Well, no, we'll do that after. Add a mesh collider to it, make sure it's convex, and we're going to scale it down to, we'll say, 0.2. We have this rock inside of it. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate that and I'm going to move it around, move it around, just like that. Nothing magical here, going outside the borders a bit, not that worried about it. Okay, where do we start? Well, we start way over there. Well, let's duplicate this more. Let's grab them all, duplicate them again and go up. Let's go down. Well, let's go down one more time. I'm sure that's plenty, right? <coughs> Now obviously those don't look like rock chunks really, but it's really not going to matter. So they all have that mesh, that convex mesh. It has to be convex. Uh, the gravity the collisions and stuff like that have, if it's not convex, you're going to have issues. So the other thing they all need is they all need a rigid body using gravity. We're going to make it continuous because we want to make sure we're having some accurate collisions. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another empty game object. And I'm going to name this Chunks. And then I'm going to grab all of these little guys. And I somehow messed that up. And we're going to make them as childish Chunks. Then we're going to deactivate chunks. We don't want to see chunks. And here we have the main one. So we're going to give that one a rigid body. 
with continuous in a collider. And we can even call that one main. This is our master thing. Um, so now what do we have? Actually, we're not going to have a rigid body on this. We're going to stick it on this guy. Um, and if, if, if you're wondering why, uh, once you put a rigid body on things, it, it creates all, everything becomes kind of one. All the children are all like everything here is now considered all the colliders are considered the same thing and when you have a collision event like if this thing hits something even without a rigid body it travels upwards to the first rigid body here and it will allow us to catch an event like this you know I'll show you that so if I hit play right he goes and I got the collision event, right? He has no collider, right? Um, it was this guy that actually did the hitting, but it was the master that received the event. Okay, so if we just unleash our chunks and explode them, how do we put them back to where they were? That's that's the trick, and that's where we're going to use arrays. And what we're going to do is we are going to build two arrays. How about an array? And we need an array of game objects. Which I probably spelled that wrong. And we need an array of positions because we need that starting position right so there's our two arrays and that has to hold these guys and all their positions in order so at the very start we want um, we want to get child count and the reason why I'm using this is because we're going to be using two arrays um, well you'll you'll see so this is an integer so a number of children which is what we're going to call our variable here but when it's not of the owner we actually we're going to grab the chunks here so that will tell us how many children we have now once we have the amount of children I'm going to use iterate and I'm going to iterate for the length of the number of children right a loop and we'll call it done you can call these events anything I, I, I just use loop all the time so now an iterate is how we're going to run through an array and there's a pile of actions for these so what we're saying is when this action happens, is that what this loop is, is it's kind of like you're custom building actions to run on everything all at once, right? So what we're saying is, okay, when we're going to iterate through, um, we're going to iterate through for the number of children. For each children, or for each number, um, we need to know where we're at. So we're going to get current index. So over here, now we're going to get child number of that same chunks at the current index. And we're going to call this the event object. So we're as we're iterating through, we're going to get the first child, or we'll, we're, we're going to we get the number of children. Okay, at zero, we're going to get child zero, then child one, then child two, and then child three. 
right? And that's all what this one's doing. And all we're saying is at child one, we are gonna get that. We are gonna add um, piece event object to our array. But the other thing we wanna do is we wanna get position of that event object, event vector. And we're gonna make this one self because we don't care where in the world it is. We care where it is according to this. Okay, uh, there's, there's a big difference there. So make sure that's self. So we're gonna get position <coughs> on self. And we are going to array add positions event. Oh, that's going to be about that. Okay. So we get them and we add. And then we can finish that. And we come over here and we say done. Now, we have, we, we, we more or less will, will store each piece and their positions. Okay. So on collision enter, what do we want to happen? When this thing falls, we want to activate two objects. We want this big, huge one to go away. We don't want to destroy it because we're going to reuse it but we want the chunks to become active. Okay, and we're gonna throw a small weight in there. Move that down. We'll say two seconds. And then after that, so once he becomes active, those chunks are gonna just go flying just because they got the physics happening. So after that, what we want to do is at the start, we want another get position. This is kind of key of the owner this time. And this is going to be a start vector world. This, this time it's a world. So wherever this is at the game start, that's where we want to save it. So we're going to copy these two because after two seconds, we're gonna flip them. And we're gonna go activate the main, deactivate the chunks, and we're gonna set position of the owner back to the start in the world. Okay. Now, technically if we ran that, it would work, but the chunks are just gonna be scattered everywhere. They'll just be deactivated. We need a way to reset those chunks. Let's check time. I have a minute and a half. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to iterate um, we're just going to reuse the number of children. We want to loop done okay well maybe we should probably call it good there since I have 40 seconds and I should do another video and we'll finish that off and I'll show you how we rebuild their positions uh, based on those array values we have just over and over and over but as you can see there it goes that kind of break right but it's not going to keep breaking because the chunks aren't getting reset yet. So we'll fix that up and we'll see you again in another video.